Welcome to Coco's 2D Tutorials, brought to you by Bob Euland. For more information go to bobeuland.com slash cocos2d. This tutorial is called Simple State Machines. In games your program sometimes needs to respond to events in ways that can vary depending on post events. The finite state machine is a programming technique that can handle such situations easily. Here is an example of how a state might be drawn. A state is represented by a circle and can be identified by a name or a number. This arrow represents some event that leads to our state. When we are inside our state, we sit and wait until either the event E1 happens or event E2 happens. If E1 happens, then we go to A, which is some other place in our program, and continue from there. If E2 happens, then we go to B and continue from there. Here is one concrete example of a heater that can be in two states. Initially, the heater is turned off and waiting in the zero state. When the temperature falls below 24 degrees Celsius, the heater is turned on and goes to state 1. It waits there until the temperature rises above 26 degrees Celsius and when that happens, the heater is turned off and it goes to state zero. Observe that this can be implemented using if-else statements. But when we have many objects and many states, it becomes too difficult for a human to handle. However, with state as objects, it becomes manageable. Here is another example. We have a dwarf which can be in three states. He can be in a mine digging for diamonds. If he finds three or more diamonds, he goes to the bank and exchanges the diamonds for dollars, which he puts in his bank account. If he has more than $5,000 in his bank account, he goes home Otherwise, he returns to the mine and digs for more diamonds. So, we have three states, mine, bank and home. The dwarf will have an instance variable called current state, which tells in which state he is in. He will have some other properties, like how many diamonds he currently have in his pockets and how much money he has in the bank. The dwarf will also have a name. This simple scenario is what we will program in our tutorial. However, we could make it more complex. We could add more properties like thirst. When the dwarf is thirsty enough, he will go into a saloon to quench his thirst. He can be hungry, and if hungry enough, he will go to Snow White and ask for a piece of her delicious blueberry pie. He can be fatigued and if fatigued enough, he will go home and sleep until he gets rested and so on. And this is just one object, one dwarf. We can of course have many dwarfs. We can have other characters like Snow White and the Mean Queen and they can send messages to each other and the whole scenario can become quite complicated. That's when the finite state machines become handy. Let's go to Xcode and see how this is done. We are inside Xcode. Our task is to implement a dwarf as a finite state machine. And our plan is to implement each state as a singleton object. 
Let's look at hello world layer.h. We have one instance variable, a dwarf called dopey. In the implementation, in the init, we are creating a new dwarf with name dopey. And then we call the method dopey update each fourth second. Here is the dopey update. And the only thing we do here is to send the message update to dopey object. Let's look at the dwarf class. The dwarf is a CC node. And the dwarf has four instance variables. First a state called current state, then an integer called diamonds, which represents the current number of diamonds in the dwarf's pocket, the integer money, which represents the number of dollars that the dwarf has in the bank, and the name of the dwarf. Here the four instance variables are made into properties. Then we have three methods. One for creating the dwarf called init with name, another called update, which we saw earlier will be called each fourth second, and the change state with a parameter called new state. If we look in the implementation file, we see that we initialize the dwarf with zero diamonds, zero dollars in the bank. We are placing him in the mine by setting his current state to mine. And then we are setting the dwarf's name to the name provided. After initialization, we will receive the update message each fourth second. And the only thing we do here is to send the execute message to the current state, with the dwarf himself as parameter. In the change state method, we are sending the exit message to the old state, setting the current state to the new state, and sending an enter message to the new state. Let's now look at our states. First, we have an abstract class called state, which will require that each concrete subclass implements these three methods. How do we force the subclasses to implement those methods? Well, we do it with a little trick. And the trick is to use does not recognize the selector. I will not explain it here, but you can alt click on it and read about it here. Let's go to the first concrete state called the mine. And as you can see, the mine is a state. The three necessary methods are not declared here, because they are already declared in the superclass. However, they must be implemented in the implementation file. And as you can see, that is not yet done. So, let's do that by pasting some code. And as you can see, the large portion of the code is log statements. In the enter, we write the name of the dwarf, followed by walking to the diamond mine. In the execute, we log picking up a diamond. We increase the number of diamonds with one, 
and if the dwarf has more than three diamonds in his pocket, then we send a change state message to the dwarf with the bank as the new state. And in the exit, we just log walk into the bank with my pockets full of precious stones. Let's now go to the bank state and implement the three methods. Paste some code. When we enter the bank, nothing happens. When we execute, we set the number of diamonds to zero and increase the money in the bank with $3,000 and log a message of how much money the dwarf now has in the bank. And then we check if the dwarf has more than $5,000. Then we change the state to home. Otherwise, we change the state to mine. On exit, nothing happens. Let's go to home and implement the three methods here also. Paste some code. When we enter, we log the message, I'm filthy rich, never have to work a day in my life. In the execute, we log the message, living the good life, yes siree. And in the exit, we don't do anything. Let's run this and see what happens. As you can see, a number of log messages reveals the exciting life of a dwarf. The whole thing works as intended. Let's stop. And before we end this tutorial, let's have some fun. We go to helloworldlayer.h and introduce another dwarf called Sneezy. In the implementation file, let's paste some code. Here we are creating the dwarf Sneezy. And here we are calling the Sneezy update message each fifth second. Let's implement that method by pasting some code. You can see that Sneezy gets an update message. Let's test this. And now you can see the messages revealing the exciting life of two dwarfs. Thank you for watching.